this. Hey people, welcome back to episode 20, that's right, of Heaven's Kitchen. We're just one away from the end, which will probably come two weeks from now, not one because of shifts I have at work next week, meaning I can't continue. Anyway, on with the show. Today we're doing steak, not tartare, just Scotch fillet steaks. I know I'm actually cooking again, believe it or not. Not just being lazy and doing hot dogs. Uh, don't mind Tim, he just got bitten by a tiny little ant earlier today and he's just died. It's Australia for God's sake, you can never be too careful. At least the food's still good. Whoa! Okay. That was a false alarm. Died. Now that I've dealt with him, ignore him. I'll let it in a pool of blood later. No I won't, I'm not that good at editing. Anyway, let's get on with the food, shall we? No, wrong potatoes. There we go. Right potatoes. Ow. He's just falling. Sound effects. Oh my god, there's blood everywhere! Let's do this. Time to fill the kettle out. Oh. People. You may be wondering why Chester is in such a weird mood today. I am not in a weird mood all day, to be honest. I love the fact that editing means we can jump up me poor. Time for an exclusive cutting lesson. Right, right in front of the camera. Yeah! How to cut a potato, like anyone doesn't know that. And you get your big fat knife and you slice the potato in half, you kill that thing, you murder it. That's what I'm talking about, you know, you get in there and you destroy this thing. And that's how you chop potatoes. But none of you knew that. Into the pan they go. It's like that game Lemmings. Oh sh! Alright, you cook fast. There's my chopping board. What shall we cook with the steak today? Oh my word, yes. I am so doing that with two of them, not three of them. <laughs> I'm doing chili powder. Give this steak a kick. Drop it in. 
sensitivities. to witness the aromas appear in front of him. Now, let's stay so we can come up and get to the main part of this show. This looks more like a microphone. Unless I'm like one of those old American TV presenters. Time for the price is right. You get the price, we tell you if it's right. No. Here we go. So, the main point of the show is to talk about this thing here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This time, is, last time was a rousing success, landed with an amazing pun, and I'm keen to prove to you again in tonight's show that I can do more puns, but let's talk about steak. This is what I really want. I'm cooking steak, I'm gonna talk about steak. The first thing I find, but Tim's gone again. First thing I find funny about steak, why have you gone again? Because you're gonna get really boring. Oh, really? <laughs> and standing here doing nothing is more interesting, isn't it? No. The first thing, I, back to show. First thing I'll state, right, out of all the foods in the world, it's the only one which has the same name, shares the same name as a weapon, as you drive steak through the heart of a vampire to kill it. I didn't watch Twilight, I despise it, I just know that. Okay? <laughs> but the funny thing is, why is it the only one? Well, think about it. Think of any other fruit, food or vegetable, or whatever, and you can't really use it as an option to share the same name as a weapon, can you? For example, you can't go, oh, I potatoed him to death, I did, or I shoved a banana right in there to kill him. That just sounds wrong on all levels. <laughs> See, steak is the only one. Drive a steak through a heart, it's got a really punch, punchful, powerful delivery in terms of a food item, hasn't it? Whereas any other fruits and vegetables and whatever just sounds sloppy. Onion, banana, as I said already, leek. I mean, leek sounds incredibly pathetic. I mean, that shares the same name of something bad. Oh, it's got a leek. You're not going to say you leaked him to death, are you? Yeah. See, I kind of had an idea as this would go on, but... It, kind of left my head, there's a lot of things to do. I've said the joke about the stage, now that I've said it, I'm not convinced it was that funny. Um, <laughs> see, I'm just rambling now. Lord, I was born a rambling man, trying to make a living, doing the best that I can. Ooh, what to talk about next? Yeah. 
let's talk about Hitler. <laughs> I bet not too many comedy clubs like to start a gig with that line. Not too many comedians, I should say, like to start a gig with that line. And I'm not expecting a, a laugh from that, no. Obviously, he killed himself, as you do when you're a dictator of Brett Howe and the whole world hates you, even after you're dead. I wonder if um, Justin Bieber will get the same treatment as Hitler did. <clears throat> um, so basically, yeah, he shot himself and apparently he took a cyanide pill. Now, that's why I have issues in a conspiracy theory may be arising here. This, he was with his wife, Ava, at the time, obviously, beloved Ava. Hated Hitler. Um, <clears throat> and obviously he died with his wife, she died then as well. Now, was it a cyanide pill is the absolute question. I'm not sure when Viagra was invented, but you never know. It may well have been he was trying to take a Viagra pill and mistook it for cyanide and went dead. But even if that wasn't the case, I have to say, like, he did a great job in terms of suicide. He had a backup plan just in case shooting himself didn't work. I'm just going to pop a cyanide pill in my mouth. I'll do the German accent. I can do it. Eva, I'm just going to pop a cyanide pill in my mouth. Just in, just in case the bullet from the gun doesn't work. Oh, the potatoes are bubbling. I'll get to them in a minute. We have a backup plan for suicide. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to make too many jokes about it. I mean, I don't think it's, it's a touchy subject, and I don't think people should ever kill themselves. This is turned very somber all of a sudden. That's what happens when you talk about Hitler. Germans, no sense of comedian, all right? I mean, some no sense of comedy, am I right? No. Um, with the exception of Henning Bain. I'll just check on those potatoes. With a fork, not just by looking at them. So, I can't talk to you about current events because I don't keep up with the news. I really don't. I'm honestly super serious. You could ask me anything about, not the weather, I'm fascinated by that, but you can't make jokes about the weather. Apart from, my, I like, apart from that, I like, my, I like my woman like I like my weather. Wet, wild, and forever 21. But, like, news, politics, I'm yawning just thinking about it. I get really bored on that subject. I mean, I don't find it, I honestly don't get why anyone finds it interesting. You see some people really getting into political debate. People talking about tax or budget cuts or whatever. And then you get people like me who are just going, oh, let's change the channel, it's boring. Yeah, other people who go, oh, I'm gonna take, I might get into this, you know. Those are those people who just can't make up their mind, they really piss me off. But then you get those people who every rebuff there is of the political debate that's going on, like, they get well into it. It's like watching, the, it's like them watching us, people like me and you other people out there who like sports, at like a soccer match, for example, going, get in, son! Come on! On your head, son! Except they do it with politics, and instead of saying, get in, and on your head, they're going, get in! Use the head, son! Yeah, good thinking! Yeah, you stopped him now! I don't know how, I don't know why, and something happened where they lost their life. Figuratively, not literally, of course. <clears throat> As in to tell them to get a life. Try that again looking down the camera. Get a life. No, I looked away at the last second. It's difficult to get things right, and even when you're not under pressure. Get a life. There we go. And school always had it. I mean, you're under immense pressure to be fair at school. All the teachers telling you, don't fail this exam, it will be the last exam you ever do. If you fail this, your life is over. Not really the best way to do it, if you ask me. I mean, sure, it motivates them, but it does negative motivation. 
It's like going up to a bunch of people. It's kind of like going up to a, like a a class with obese people trying to desperately lose weight, and instead of going, you can try, you can really do it, you go up to them, look them dead in the face, and go, don't eat another cake. You will die, and it will be the last thing you eat, fat so. It's not going to work, is it? It's negative motivation never does and never will. Tim's back, by the way. Everyone say hi to Tim. Hi, Tim. Glare at me. He's back perfectly in time. It's time for puns with Chester Punson Brown. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I really am. Tim got bitten by an ant today. I took one look at it and said, that swell. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh, I told you I was good at puns. <laughs> Whole mix of comedy. I see that's probably why I'm not a good comedian, because I'm too mediocre at everything. He's like, I'm the mediocre man, pretty much. We really useless superpower, isn't it? Step way, it's the mediocre man! Did he say media? No, I said mediocre. That's right, he is average at everything. There's not one thing I can think of which he excels in. Sure, there's nothing he's bad at, but there's nothing he's good at. That's why he's pretty much mediocre. Potatoes are still boiling. See, I've only ran out of things to say. Let's go back to the mediocre man, shall we? No, because it wasn't really that good, let's be honest. Of a joke. Just leaning over, and like, I I'm not formal at all. I know I'm English, and I know I should act really posh and be talking like this. You know, when their mouth moves in a different way to what they're actually saying, and even goes on after they finish speaking. No, but, um, I really should be, you know, like, leaning over, like, hey, sup, guys. So, what, uh, guess what? I got so f wasted last night. No, I shouldn't be that informal about trying to deliver wisdoms towards you. Wisdoms? Pearls of wisdom towards you. Whatever. I should be upright. Not stiff like that. I mean, you know, <laughs> I love it when people get up on stage and it's not like they have stage fright, but they have zero, and I mean zero stage experience. They stand up on stage and it's like these stiff, monotone, robotic deliveries. They like walk up onto stage normally and as soon as they get on the stage they freeze up and go, this is my presentation. It was good. This is the results of what I did. It found, I found out I was on the right track for most of the time. And then you get other people who get up on stage, like all loose, walk up and they're, they're too involved. They're like, so. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They're like, so. Check out my um, experiment before I get onto the details. Any single girls in the house? If you want to find out what really happened in this experiment, meet me backstage after. That was actually the perverted type. I'll just start, I'll start again. They walk up and they, they even sit down somewhere. They, they don't care. They got, they got no rules to follow. They go, so yeah, you can see he got a did, a did the experiment, did the experiment, but yeah, really, I mean, effects on alcohols and pre, on alcohols? Effects of preloading on teens around Australia. Let me tell you a story I know. One time, right, I was preloading, as you do with my friends. This is not me actually, but this is just someone acting, me acting as someone. And I got so wasted. Let me tell you one thing that happened. Well, I can't remember because I was so wasted. At this point, they just start bull****. They can't remember. And it's not even interesting anyway. They're just rambling. It ends up being like, well, yeah. 20 minutes later. <laughs> And that happened, and I was like, "Woo!" And they're like, "Wow!" And I'm like, wow! And whoa, whoa! I can't believe that happened. Well, it's it's basically like they're an old comic book of superheroes come to life. You know the ones without any writing is dialogue is like kapow, blammo. They're basically like that on a stage, slouched in a chair, trying to tell you about their life and failing miserably. I'll check on the potatoes. BRB.
So, as the evening goes on, let me check the time. It is 18.15. That's another thing, yeah. Remember when you get the people where they speak in 24 hour time? They're not a clock, they're a human being. Can they get some sense about them, seriously? How confusing is it? When they walk, when you go, what's the time there? They go, oh, well, it's 20.32. Actually, you work it out, idiot. I mean, seriously, who has the time to start? I mean, generally, I'm not saying idiot. We're not idiots. We should be able to work it out. It's just annoying. They say, well, it's 8.13. Obviously, it's my time outside. And obviously, therefore, it's 8.13 at night. They, don't, they can say that. Maybe they have a feel like, oh, well, if, it's, if I say 8, you may get confused. I mean... Eight in the morning looks a lot like eight at, I mean, eight in the morning looks a lot like eight at night, doesn't it? If you're in Antarctica during winter. But we're not in Antarctica, are we? So just tell us the time normally. We don't go around... We don't go around giving you directions in, like, latitude and longitude, do we? We don't go... If they ask... Excuse me, my dear sir, which way is it to the nearest supermarket? We don't go, oh, well, you see, you see that we're on 50, la we're on 50 latitude and, four and 28 longitude right now. Well, you want to go down that road until you reach about, I don't know, 51 latitude, 50.2 latitude, you know? Oh, 50.2 latitude and... Oh, no, but 24 longitude. No, we don't do that because it's stupid, isn't it? We're not on, like you're not like you're not an, an analog clock. Like you're not a digital clock set to 24 hours time. We're not a globe. And there's the other people who speak in phonetics, not phonetics. Sorry, they speak in the radio alphabet. Tim, my friend, he's the worst of that. Ask him how to spell a word, and this will be, instead of going, say I'll ask him, I'm not this stupid, this is an example. Say I'll ask him to spell, I don't know, steak, for example. Instead of going, well, it's just S-T-E-A-K, you stupid idiot, how do you not know how to spell that? You'd go, it's Sierra Tango. I'll point out at this point, I do not know the, the radio alphabet. I mean, who has the time to study it unless you are in the Navy? <laughs> I'll get there in the end. No, I've got it. Instead, you'll go, well, actually, now that you ask, it's Sierra Tango Echo Alpha Kilo. And I'll just go, what? Is anyone wood? <laughs> I mean, I'm asking you how to spell a word. That obviously means I'm having trouble with something. I don't need you making adding to the work. I'm not in school and I don't get homework when I'm out of school. <laughs> it's like friends who give people homework. It's just like giving a friend homework because you just hate that they're such an idiot. Just checking. For example, Walk up to a friend and go, hi, and they go, is that essay due I asked you? Is that essay, have you done that essay I asked you to do when we were speaking on Facebook last night? What? You know the, S, the essay on tax, you know the essay on tax and recollection and whether they're doing the right thing or not? No. Well, I'm not going to talk to you till it's done. Bye. <laughs> These aren't jokes again, I'm ranting like I was last week. I have a problem with that. I rant more than I make jokes. I think I'm making jokes, but I'm really just ranting. See, I'm, I'm doing it again now. I'm complaining about me now, though. That's the only difference. 
A bit of self-loathing. Everyone laughs at that, don't they? Just checking the sticks. I'm using the moment to turn it around to think and get stuff in my head. Hence why I'm not a good comedian, if you haven't already figured it out. I'll mash some potatoes in a minute. Get the milk. Boy, the milk. I'm going to mash some sweet potato. Or sweet potato, I'm going to turn this down and check the space. I'll leave them on this lower heat, I think, whilst I'm mashing the potatoes. You know what I'll talk about? Love and relationships. Because someone like me has so much experience in that. Those of you who know me also know I'm sarcastic and therefore, but also know the truth. <laughs> and that is obviously that I've never have been, and I'm not going to say never will be, because I hope that's not the case. <laughs> never have been in a relationship with a girl. <laughs> I'm just mashing the potato, it looks like vomit it does. I've got to find a good way to end this comedy sketch and then so to end the 20th and penultimate episode of this season. Almost. Huh? Is penultimate. Got... That means second to last. No. You want me to spell that for you, Tim? No. I will. Papa. Echo. November. Umbrella. Uniform, sorry. <laughs> I was going to end it like that, but it seemed to not work because I stopped up and couldn't remember the radio alphabet. Tim, this is quite ephemeral really, isn't it? Do you know how to spell that? Do you want me to tell you? No. Yeah, I can't do the same game twice, can I? No. Thank you for watching, people. You've been a great audience, as usual. And this has been episode 20, the, that's right, penultimate episode of Heaven's Kitchen. Tune in two weeks from now because I won't be cooking next week when we go through the final episode of season one, no, we're not leaving you forever, of Heaven's Kitchen. This has been a wonderful ride. The steaks are probably burning by now. <laughs> but let's just say they're not quite. The only thing that's been on fire in this kitchen today is me with my quick fire jokes. <laughs> like an AK-47. I'm out. Laters and take care.